Greetings and welcome back to room 303 and the St. Martin Guides Lectures. This is lecture number 9. We will be working with chapter 9 of the St. Martin's Guide to Writing, arguing for causes or effects. I just want to start by reminding you of where you've been. Starting in chapter 6 with the arguable thesis, persuasive writing. Remember, we started learning about arguable thesis writing in chapter 6, then in chapter 7, we uh, went with the topic of proposing a solution, then in chapter 8, justifying an evaluation. And now in chapter 9, the, the fourth of these kinds of essays, these academic argu arguable thesis uh, kinds of essays, we're going to pay attention to the notion of cause and effect, especially as it relates to the research that we'll be doing. I just want to start, though, with page 330 of the 12th edition of St. Martin's Guide, uh, and read with you. Why is social media really so important or popular? Why do we watch horror movies, even though they make our skin crawl? Are smartphones causing loneliness and depression? Why are people moved more by the plight of an individual than by the plight of a crowd? The quest for answers to our questions inspires scientific inquiry, which can fully and satisfactorily explain the causes and effects of many things. But for questions like those addressed by the readings in this chapter, the causes and effects are uncertain and may never be known conclusively. For such subjects, it's helpful to think of analyzing causes or effects as a special kind of argument that considers evidence to determine whether a cause is likely to play an important, perhaps surprising role in bringing about the effect, or whether surprising effects might be the result of a particular cause. And then to jump over to 331, just to be sure you understand what you're doing in this chapter, we ask you to choose a subject that does not have a single definite cause or effect that everyone accepts as fact, and then to argue that one or more than one cause or effect is the most plausible culprit, providing reasons and evidence to support your claim. Without question, this is a little more sophisticated paper, which is why it comes as the number four of our arguable thesis writing. This one will require close study of models to begin with. 332, the um, outlining of the four models we'll be looking at. First of all, we're going to look at Clayton Pagnillian's um, argument that the popularity of social media is driven not only by our need to connect, but also by our curiosity and desire for fame. We'll then watch the great Stephen King offer causes for why we crave horror movies beyond the simple shiver effect. Then we're going to look at uh, Gene Twinge's analysis of the negative effects of social media and smartphones on teens. And then finally, we're going to look at Vedens trying to explain why people are often generous toward individuals or small groups, but do not help large groups. Now let's pay attention to the four key elements as outlined by uh, the textbook for you uh, on page 333 and following. First of all, a well-presented subject is the first key element. Followed number two at the bottom of 333 with a well-supported cause and effect analysis. Over to page 334, number three, an effective response to objections. Remember, we have to consider the acrimonious audience as we talked about it in, um, in, in chapter six, lecture six. An effective response to objections and alternative causes or effects. And then finally, on 335, as always, clear, logical organization. Now, it's true that by the time you're writing your fourth paper here, they do in some ways start to look very similar. They are, as we said before, variations on theme. And so you want to be sure that you're paying attention to the ways in which these key features, these four key features, factor heavily in all four of the papers since chapter six to now. As for the readings, I'd just like to point out really quickly that at the conclusion of the first reading on 340, do notice that we have the MLA style book. And of course, you will be required to provide your five pieces of external validation using the MLA style book. Let's jump now over to 356 at the conclusion of our, um, of our prompts and study the actual, the actual prompt, sorry, at the conclusion of our, of our um, um, uh, models. Let's look at the prompt itself on 356. Write an essay about an important or intriguing subject and speculate about why it might have occurred or what its effects might be. Again, just to remind, we are choosing a topic about which 
there is debate as to the cause or to the effects, okay? So in other words, don't pick some kind of simple cause and effect because that will, uh, that will undermine the work that you're doing in this paper. Make sure to continue. Make sure it's an appropriate subject for a speculative cause-effect analysis and not simply a report of widely accepted causes or effects, as I just said. Be sure to argue for the plausibility of certain causes or effects while anticipating your reader's likely objections to your argument, as well as their preferred alternative. The um, chart to follow, as in all of the previous uh, papers, but really in this one, is going to be of great value to you. I just want to jump over, though, to page 359 and the choosing of a topic. Sometimes this is a little difficult for students. Choosing a topic at the middle of the page here, test your choice. After you've made a provincial choice, ask yourself the following questions. And obviously, jam writing to try to come up with potential topics is always going to be our suggestion. But take a look at a couple questions. One, do I know enough about the subject or can I learn enough in the time I have? And in the time I have is, of course, the important parenthetic there. Two, do I know what causes or effects readers would be likely to think of? And do I have any ideas about what causes or effects might surprise and interest them? And then at the very bottom of that page, a research note, as you begin exploring the subject and its possible causes or effects, you may discover that you need to conduct research before you can go further. This will probably, this will probably be uh, very true. And then you want to jump ahead to page 362 to see a research note that's there. The chart on 361 is a great one in regards to analyzing possible causes or effects. Look at number two there. Um, some suggestions. Why do my readers think blank could have caused X? Or why do I think blank could have caused X? And then the third one. Is blank necessary to bring about X? That is, could X not happen without blank? Or is X sufficient enough in itself to cause blank? The um, suggestions here, I think, are, are uh, useful ones. Go to 364 really quickly in the thesis study. The thesis is sometimes difficult to frame for this kind of paper, so I want to give you a few examples. There's three. The reasons for X may surprise you, such as blank, blank, and blank. Or, the effects of X, obviously X are being the, the topic about which you're, you're discussing. The effects of X may be alarming, but they are clear. Blank, right, after the colon. Or the third one, X plays a disturbing role in our lives, our families, our communities, our workplaces. It does, is, provides blank. And then finally, for many years, Group A has believed that blank. Now there's research supporting this claim, but not for the reasons you may think. It's not blank that has been causing this phenomenon, but blank. This kind of thesis study, hypercritical. And then finally, I, I love how, uh, how, how uh, we, we get here in St. Martin's Guide. Focus on the opening sentences on 367, right? Review what you've written to see if you have something that would help you present the subject of your cause and effect argument for your audience, or try out one or two of these opening strategies. One, demonstrate the relevance of your topic by putting it in context for your reader, page 368. Begin with a surprising assertion, or begin with a scenario or an anecdote, or describe the writer's authority to establish credibility. Well, I, uh, I send you now on your way. I wish you the best of luck here. We're coming to the end of our work in St. Martin's Guide in terms of the essays that we're writing. Really challenge yourself to do good research, and then obviously formulating a logical outline will be of importance as well. Thank you.